This is an ATV network. New Attitude TV. Off the coast of California. Mental health tips every day. We encourage you to subscribe to the channel and support our content while we support you on your recovery journey. third part of this series because all of this if anybody's wondering she's doing this and i have no idea this is truly live you guys i have no idea what's gonna uh, come out of my dear friend annie and i i love her to death she's amazing uh but we better get to the subject at hand which is how to talk to a narcissist how do we end up talking to a narcissist well obviously the first thing to say is that if at all possible you do not talk to a narcissist the best kind of communication with the narcissist is precisely no communication Uh, no contact is always going to be the best option if it is at all possible unfortunately there are situations in which you do have to talk to a narcissist to some degree and therefore you have to create a whole other way to talk to a narcissist Normally, we use commu- we use conversation for communication. That's kind of normal in everyday life. If you do have to talk to a narcissist, then you are using language to shut down communication and to only impart the things that are least damaging. So it's a whole different strategy that you have to use. Yes, you have to filter out any information that they can use against you. You also have to filter out your old patterns of being a nice person, trying to meet them halfway, expecting empathy and all of this stuff. Narcissists are always looking for vulnerability. They're looking for the chink in your armor that they can shove a spear through. So you always have to think in terms of keeping your defenses up. So particularly as a woman, if you're talking to someone, you might well say, I think the best thing to do would be. You can't do that with a narcissist. You instantly, the comeback will be, well, either you're wrong or you would think that or who cares what you think. So you'd have to change to this is what's going to happen. So it's actually talking like a boss or as it works in practice, using their language patterns back to them. First of all, with saying this is the way it is and not leaving the way open for debate. That's one way of doing it. Then one of the other lovely ones that I enjoy and my clients are now using to great effect is this thing of when you talk to a narcissist narcissist, um, and you ask them for something, they will habitually say no and you kind of say, why not? Or, you know, something along those lines, and they say, because I just can't. I just can't. And it's very effective to use that back to them. You and I both know that that is an idiotic statement, because I just can't. But when you use it back to a narcissist, they often go, okay. Or if they don't get it the first time, you just shake your head and go, I just can't. And they tend to go, I get that. That resonates with me. Go ahead. It tends to be a kind of block, but you have to think of a narcissist as a hydra. The hydra in Greek mythology that had was all those snakes on the top mm-hmm. of the head. So you've managed to deal with one snake. Of course, there'll be plenty more. This is not the end of the war. It's the end of that particular battle. 
that the whole issue with a narcissist is that you've totally lost your power. And when you play their game linguistically, you will lose because you're fighting for a toehold in the situation. When you play your game, your way, it all starts to change because whether you win or lose that particular exchange, at least you've done something and the, and you get better at it. My clients actually have quite a lot of fun with it. So on the one hand, there's a level of awareness that they have, but on the other, when they start from the premise that they're the smartest person on the planet, they stay with that because they have to stay with that. So you show up in totally different ways and they don't get it. They still think that they have to keep winning. So you change their get your game. They don't know to change their game. It doesn't work as well for them as it did before. But the person with the most mental agility wins. And that person will be the survivor, not the narcissist, once the survivor knows how to do it. Does this make sense? Uh, so well, I was going to say that if you're in a relationship with someone who's playing these stupid games, you have to ask yourself, why are you bothering? Yes, you know, why do you want to be with someone who's making you look like a fool in public? Why would you do that? Me. Yeah, absolutely not. But it's a totally pointless thing to do. Narcissists both know and don't care how vile they're being. The reason that you need to tell them that they're being horrible because you need them to hear it and validate it before you own it. When you feel and you trust yourself to believe that if you think they're being vile, they're being vile and horrible, then you don't need them to say that. So needing, wanting to tell a narcissist how horrible they're being is actually you abdicating your own power to judge. It's exactly the same issue all over again. Why do you need to correct a narcissist? You don't want to be having that kind of dialogue. You don't have a dialogue. If you have to talk to them, you just tell them how it is, how mm. things are. But you don't enter into that thing. If they're not listening, they're not listening. And you just smile and say, I knew you wouldn't listen. Thank you, Paxton. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. That's awesome.